So, I decided to do a longer format video about the Firecom 8500 tone generators. Um, I'm saying generators because I have two of them here, and um, they are both uh, a Bogan tone generator. I have two different versions of it. Um, this is the newer one, which is the TG4C. Uh, there's also the older one, which is the TG4B, is currently what's sort of attached to the system here. Um, the 4B um, just basically is more primitive inside of it. They didn't use as many connectors, uh, and it supports a smaller voltage range. Uh, it can sound a little different sometimes, but I almost just put it up to age of components. Most of these are just 4000 ICs, uh, just CMOS, um, nothing like rocket science or anything, uh, just difference in the capacitors and voltage regulation maybe accounts for, you know, some of this, just any sound differences between them. It's basically an analog tone generator. So because there's analog tones, there's going to be differences between them. Um, the other thing to maybe talk about here is the fire sequencer was doing some sequencing with it. And, um, you'll see that I have different modes on here where I can basically select the sound that it's playing. So let me demonstrate that and turn it on. So how it's able to do that um, is through this relay on here and through some of the uh, extra relays on the fire sequencer. So this board has the X4 version of the fire sequencer, and that's basically this board right here. And then there's just this little daughter card here to basically just help it attach all the buttons that are mounted in the front panel over here. Um, the um, also the NAC input circuit, but, um, anyway, the point I was trying to get out here is there's this little relay here, and then there's some of these wires coming off some of the extra relays on this X4 fire sequencer. So because those are there, um, just show you what it does when you switch between these. So you can see it's switching between the different uh, relays on there. And so essentially what it's doing is it's selecting one of four sounds on this board here. So you got chime, slew, whoop, post, pulse tone, steady tone, and then there's a trigger, a reset, and there's also a continuous mode. Now, in some of my first videos of the fire, uh, of the firecom tone, um, I was doing a lot of like switching and triggering, and that's because I hadn't actually been playing around with the continuous mode yet. However, after I started playing with the continuous mode, uh, what I started to realize is that that sounds a lot like what the uh, actual Firecom uh, tone sounded like. So I don't think they were doing all that specific sequencing. What I think they were doing was cutting between the whoop and the chime sounds. Uh, what I don't entirely know is if they had two separate tone modules just always set one on whoop one on chime and they just switch between them or if they were doing what i'm doing here which is using relays to switch 
the tone on a single module. That part, I don't know. Um, you know, unless I actually had one to look at, we may never know. And, uh, you know, there's definitely been, uh, you know, some questions about, well, how do you know that this is even what they used at all? And, and of course, I don't have any direct proof of that. However, what we do know is that all these companies in New York, before fire systems had built-in voice, were all putting in intercom systems and voice systems with old timey intercoms. And systems like Firecom or companies like Firecom, would they really have had time to go build all that from scratch or would they just go use an existing uh, intercom system? I am fairly certain they would have just used whatever existing stuff they could have found. And um, what I'm realizing now is that there's many ways you could have gotten tones like this in, you know, the late seventies, uh, you might've done something like this with analog chips. Once you got into the nineties, you might've done something more like the uh, Radio Shack generator that I've been playing with in my recent videos, uh, like this, which used uh, like an all-in-one chip that had, uh, you know, eight different sounds. And that chip was used in anything from toys uh, to little keychains to uh, even actual sirens because they actually had versions of the chip that only had real siren sounds. So, you know, go figure. There's all different avenues you could have taken to, you know, generate any sort of speaker type tones, you know, not just horns. Um, however, uh, with this system, these modules were available and off the shelf. And it mentions in the patent for the Firecom system that uh, it just used an off the shelf available circuit. So it didn't say module, it said circuit. But the thing is, is how specific did they really need to be? If you ever seen pictures of what we do have of a Firecom system, uh, most of the pictures of the panels and things like that, they're all huge, they're racks. It all looks like stuff that was just bolted together. And I really do suspect that's what it was. Um, meaning a module like this would have been just yet another thing to bolt onto it. Um, so that said, um, maybe just do another quick test here. turn the volume down a little bit so you can hear me talking and then maybe switch through the sounds while it's running. And this is also switching too. So yeah, um, you know, the other thing is, of course, this thing can sequence uh, and chop tones and all that, and it can sort of do that independently of the Firecom stuff. Um, I do want to maybe add some more into the software so that I can maybe switch through the Firecom tones, but then still have it uh, sending, you know, coding signals uh, to like chop the Firecom tones through strictly relays rather than using the triggers. Um, because right now when I am chopping them, I'm using the triggers. So different ideas I've had, uh, just different combinations of possibilities, just given all this crazy demo board can do. Um, but this is just yet another avenue that, um, you know, I've been able to take with the fire sequencer. Um, in my first videos of this tone, I was literally using the fire sequencer like directly as an audio knack, like literally putting the, uh, like outputs and triggers and everything straight through uh, the the fire sequencer. And then eventually, of course, I built one into this. Um, and then I was able to build the fire comm into this, essentially. Um, currently, my plans for the other one is to maybe see if I can get it to work in my auto call demo case or possibly with the auto call uh, direct tone board. Um, not sure which. It'll probably be the demo case if it'll fit. If not, then the direct tone will be the fallback. But it would be cool to have two different systems that can have the uh, Firecom as like a backup option. So that is going to be, um, yeah, the plan. Um, all that said, uh, I'm sure there's more information and more details I could go, uh, go into. But 
you know, we did find and do extensive research on the patent. It wasn't just me, it was two other people involved. And, um, you know, that led to us eventually finding that little blurb saying off the shelf module. You know, originally that had me going down rabbit holes. I actually bought uh, this one module here. I think it's a, yeah, the bell module. Cause I thought maybe it was a possibility that that was the tone they used. Maybe it was just a federal signal module. Um, which wasn't a bad hunch, but it obviously is not a federal signal module because they don't make a whoop that sounds quite the same. Um, so yeah, uh, that led us down a rabbit hole. I started asking around a few people and that led to the second person getting involved who literally uh, almost traced it down for me. So, um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey to get to this point. Um, to the point where I think I pretty much have the tone, uh, in a place where I want it. Um, but, uh, you can tweak the pitch and that changes the speed a little bit. So there's all sorts of tweaks you can make to it. People might say it's not exactly how it was in a recording. Well, the recording was also done like from hundreds of feet away through the echoes of cement buildings and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, unless you had a raw recording to compare to, it's never going to sound exactly the same. Um, however, I think it's fair to say that the circuit type used in these modules is definitely the same circuit type that was used in the 8500. Um, just given the similarities and everything else, it had to have been. Um, and it was available at that time. I mean, it mentions that it was a common circuit from the time, and it was. Uh, intercom systems, that was kind of what was there at the time. So it all adds up. It all follows. Um, that said, it's been the long form video about the 8500 tone. End on a note of the uh, clip of the bogan here. Till next time, folks.